thank you everybody for coming. Um, welcome to the <laughs> Rise Up Animations like initial uh, uh, inaugurate uh, uh, Filipino American History Month uh, celebration. And so this is panel one of three and we're honored to welcome um, uh, these, this illustrious esteemed uh, panel, panel. Um, and uh, you know, we're, we're talking today about like writing and animation. Uh, so I know there's a lot of interest in the community and in general of like how you would kind of uh, go about that, like breaking into writing or animation. And, um, you know, there's not a ton of resources out there. There's a lot of great resources. I will say that um, I'll give a shout out to my friend, uh, uh, Kendall Haney, who runs a podcast called Type and Tunes, which is fantastic um, on Spotify. Check that out if you haven't. I love listening to it. Um, and um, there's a, a few other resources, but um, we can kind of get started on the panel uh, right now. And uh, we'd like to welcome uh, Mickey Chrysostomo, uh, Mia Rosea, and uh, Joy Reggiano. Thank you guys for being here. Hey. Yay. Good morning. Thanks Good for morning. Us. Man, pumped up for this. <laughs> um, so we can get started with uh, introductions. Um, and uh, go around the panel. So Joy, do you want to get that started? Yes, hi, I'm Joy. Um, I, I'm typing on my computer because I have to, I have to restart for sound and stuff like that. But yes, I'm Joy. I currently write um, at Disney TV Animation um, for the show Monsters at Work. And um, before that, I was at DreamWorks. And before that, I wrote for a live action show for Netflix Kids and Fam Family called um, The Healing Powers of Dude. Nice. Nice. Oh yeah, and then I was also I, before that I was a Sesame Street fellow, and every so often I'll do a little digital shorts for Sesame. Nice, thank you, Joy. Thank you. Yay! Yay. I like this hacker yeah. angle too of like the <laughs> <laughs> the typing. Uh, Mia, um, you can go next. Yes, I can go next. Uh, I'm Mia. Uh, I am currently a story editor for an unannounced show um, that's in the pre-K bridge type space. Um, before that, I was a staff writer on The Ghost and Molly McGee, uh, which has just come out. This, the first season has just come out, so I'll plug that for them. It's on Disney Plus, and it's, it's coming out as we speak in chunks, um, and I really like those guys. Uh, great, also Asian American and Hopper representation. Um, and then before that, I was on various projects, a lot of in the junior space, in the pre-K space, especially Disney Junior, so Vampirina and Chicken Squad, a um, couple of freelance of various things there, and also the older kids space, um, which was stuff like Craig of the Creek, um, upcoming show called Dead Indy on Netflix, and um, various things, so various studios and age ranges. <laughs> Nice. Oh, Ghost and Molly McGee love in there too. Nice. Thanks, Chad. <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Mm -hmm. All right. Mickey, you're Hello. up. Hi, I'm Mickey. I, um, I wrote on The Owl House seasons two and three. And now I'm currently on an overall deal with Disney development. So that's cool. Bit of a shorter resume there, but you know, let's get <laughs> but started, baby. If they, if they don't oh, know, man. though, an overall deal is so <laughs> such a big deal. Like that people might not know, that's a very impressive thing to say. Yeah. Uh, and I should say up top. Thanks. Oh, sorry, Mickey, go ahead. Oh no, I'm done. Um, uh, up top, if anyone has any questions for the panelists um, that we can get to at the end of the panel, uh, go ahead and put them in the Q and A chat window. And then uh, we'll, we'll kind of, um, I can ask them for you or we can bring you on live so you can ask in person, which is always kind of fun, make it more interactive. But uh, just so you know, uh, as the panel's going on, like up front. So we can go ahead and get into, thank you everyone for your introductions. We're so um, honored uh, to have you guys. And, and, um, and, uh, and uh, yeah, this is gonna be great. So, um, Let's get into the questions now that we've gone through introductions. So um, Kira, do you want to kick it off or do you want me yeah, to? Yeah, for sure. I, I, we, could, we could rotate it, whichever. But um, the first question we have is like, what inspired you to become a writer? Yeah, Big so- question. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. What is the idea to be a writer? Mia, do you want to kick that off? And we can kind of like go around the room. Uh, sure. I felt like I saw they had, they had their things on mute and I was like, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> That's the trick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure, I could try. It's, it's difficult for me to answer because I've always wanted to be a writer since I was a kid and not everybody mm -hmm. has that same kind of path and that's totally legit and even cool. <laughs> um, I'm just very single minded and I always wanted to be a writer and I just didn't know what type of writing like existed basically. So when you're a kid, you kind of just think it's like books, I guess. So I wrote mm -hmm. fan fiction. I wrote like a whole Redwall fan fiction <laughs> when I was a child because nice. uh, I was obsessed with the Redwall books and I wrote like poetry and stuff so that's kind of how I was expressing myself at that time and I just really escaped into books so that's just kind of where my mind was at but mm -hmm. as I got older and I went into high school I got into theater and there became more of like a collaborative element which I really liked and it just seemed mm -hmm. to suit my writing better so that kind of put me on the path towards different kind of writing and that led me to film and TV. And then once I was in that, I kind of honed um, my focus from, okay, kind of like comedy, but not like sitcoms. Okay, kind of like genre stuff. Oh, I really want like world building and heart and comedy and this and that um, and something that's not just reality. I love like fantasy and sci-fi or some magical realism. So that kind of led me towards uh, animation. I'm a much longer version of that story, but like, <laughs> That's I can't say how I got into writing because I just I just was born and <laughs> wanted to do it. So that's yeah. how I got into animation writing. I guess I kind of honed once I realized where my voice naturally fit and what I what kind of stories I was drawn to. Got it. Right. That's cool. Yeah. Wonderful. yeah. Um, well, I'm finally on my computer um, again. Yes. But yes. Uh, so um, both my parents are doctors. Uh, so I thought I was going to be a doctor my whole life. I was like. Uh, <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> As, you know, I was going to take over my dad's clinic and everything. Um, but I always did enjoy writing and making people laugh and stuff. Um, but it was like almost like this secret part of me that was like, that's not allowed. Um, and so uh, it wasn't until I, I always I wrote for like the junior high newspaper and the high school newspaper. And I loved I watched Fairly Odd Parents ever since I was like I was 10 and Timmy was 10. And, you know, um, and also uh, Iron Giant was my favorite movie. Um, so all of my favorites, like I, I watched Danny Phantom, even well into high school, I'd like stay home on Friday nights. Like my friends would be like, you want to go out? I'm like, no, it's just Danny Phantom <laughs> night and Invader Zim night. I had an Invader Zim fan site and all that stuff. And so <laughs> I went to college and I was like, okay, well, I, um, I tried, uh, I tried pre-med and then I got to be on my first math test. And I was like, yikes, not going to cut it. So um, I ended up switching to theater um, and I, uh, yeah, I did acting and writing there. And then I interned at Nickelodeon as my first industry job for the show, Fairly Odd Parents. Oh, um, wow. oh yeah, nice. yeah. So that was really, yeah, it was just really, truly a dream job. So cool. Wow. I, you know, I, I was a huge fan of like Butch Hartman and his work and stuff. So it was just like really getting to work with a hero and on my favorite show and all that stuff. So, yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. It's like one whole round when like, <laughs> yeah, <the> whole <laughs> but you're on a show. Yeah. Yeah. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah, and then when you made it into Fairly Odd Parents, you're like, I made it. I can retire now. And then... <laughs> right. Yeah, I was like, um, unpaid internship. I did it. <laughs> 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 but, you know, I guess on that note, though, like when I, uh, I I got that internship and, you know, it was so, you know, for me, yeah, dream come true. And and getting these internships, like, I think, I forget exactly what the numbers were, but it was something like that year. Maybe they got like 2,000 2, applicants applications I don't know if that's too many but like you know and then yeah. they they hired they got like 20 or 30 interns so it's like harder to get this internship than to get into Harvard you know my parents are like yeah but does it pay so like you know that mm -hmm. was their whole thing like it was wasn't good enough you know and and even when I did get things that paid they'd be like um but what what about the next job like you, you don't have job security like so you know all the pressure of Asian parents I know they just want you to be like uh stable and and know that you're taken care of but it, you know it can be hard I get it. Oh, the Nick, yeah. the Nick turns for are sure. really sought after jobs from my understanding for sure. Yeah, it was like in the top top 10 rated internship. It was truly an amazing experience, like just truly incredible. Right. Awesome. Um, thank you for that, Joy. And then Mickey. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh yeah. Sure. Oh yeah. Wait, wait, the question. <laughs> <laughs> I was just listening. I was um, yeah. Like, I'm uh, watching a panel. Oh, I'm on the panel. That's right. <laughs> like, oh dang. Um, I gotta talk. All right. So, uh, yeah, I've always 
loved reading. Like I kind of did that pretty much the whole time I was growing up. My parents really encouraged reading. So it was kind of a thing I did more than any other thing. And I wanted to write books though, not animation or, or movies or anything like that until I found the script of The Princess Bride on the internet. And I read the script and it was so good. It's, it, I don't know, it's just, it's still to this day, one of my favorite movies. It's fantastic and that's when I kind of realized like oh people wrote these things like the things that come on my tv screen don't just come out of nothing they come from people who write these words down so that kind of made me want to go into film so I, I I'm uh, yeah but I didn't really think that it was entirely possible for me to actually do this as a career especially in animation because um I'm from the Philippines I grew up there my whole life and like there's really not much in the way I guess of like a writing career for animation back home. So uh, yeah, it. I went to film school, kind of stopped doing film afterwards because I got into like post-production and all that stuff. And then I got into Columbia here and I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna learn how to screenwrite and maybe do it as a career. And it happened. So yeah, uh, I, yeah, animation was also like the thing that kind of found its way to me because I always loved cartoons. And I think that kind of bled over into my writing because every single thing I ever wrote, people were like, is it animated? And I was like, no, it's live action. Why do you guys keep saying that? And I was like, maybe I should actually listen to what they're saying and kind of lean in. Mm -hmm. And it felt great. So yeah, <laughs> that's the story. Nikki, that same thing happened to me with my portfolio all the time before I realized that I was <laughs> yeah. just writing animation where I like looked back in retrospect, like 80% of my portfolio was animated. Mm. Yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, what, you know, what I love about animation versus live action, I mean, you know, it's so like lends itself in a lot of ways more easily to four quadrant or something. I don't know what about it. So it's like, you can, you can have this very simple core heart story of like, how to train your dragon, a boy and his dragon, you know, um, Iron Giant, a boy and his robot. But it, you can also comment on things like jingoism and nativism and like, you know, warmongering, fearmongering, nuclear war, um, you know, uh, like animal rights, you know, all these things that you can, you can um, comment on such large themes, but also make it just a great story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Hard to agree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's, That's the all. plan. That's the plan. Yes. <laughs> Colonialism, we're coming for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I so, just go ahead. Sorry go ahead. about it. No, no, oh no. My God. no okay. Um, so like oh, following off that previous part, <laughs> what is your favorite thing to write um in animation? Like, what about animation that you like to write about compared to like live action? Like, what can you push? What can you like? You know, experiment with. I mean, you guys are just gonna make me go first every time. I was just gonna see if we could like know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think we've set, yeah. we set up like a schedule. Um, now it's yeah. now this is the rotation. You're, yeah, yeah, you're <laughs> the yeah, yeah. Mia, yeah. you open you open the uh, restaurant and then. Uh, yep, and then and Mickey, Mickey will close, will close. up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what was the question? <laughs> Sorry, uh, what was our favorite thing to write in animation? Yeah, or like whether it's our favorite thing to write in this medium, I guess I. Yeah. Do you mean like, t you know, what types of stories or just TV movies or? Oh, sure. Everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, cause I like writing for kids. So in adult animation, I love to watch as well. And some animation I could argue is probably YA, which I also really enjoy watching. Um, I like to write for, for younger audience personally, like either from YA or to little kids, uh, as opposed to adult animation. I'm sure I have some some stories in me that are suited for adult animation but I find that like when I got into writing for for the kids and family space I sort of realized nothing will ever affect you the way something you read as a kid will mm -hmm. like nothing will ever reach you and affect you deeply and mean so much to you and get you in that part of life as like when you were younger and it made this huge impact on you so I really take that super seriously and I really want to give that experience and a positive version of that experience to other people. Like the way I feel about Calvin and Hobbes, like nothing that, that I watch as an adult is ever going to make me feel that way or make me feel connected <laughs> in that way. So I really like writing to this sort of like teen and, and younger kid um, audience. And I also enjoy writing um, definitely things that are not totally grounded in reality. So I've noticed I have a really hard time writing 
like a grounded sitcom. Um, <laughs> there's shows that are that have no supernatural element, and my brain will not conform to that show at all. It's weirdly more realistic to write like a supernatural element to me that feels grounded to me and that's how my mind works and that's how I see the world so it comes very naturally so like the projects that I'm able to do that on I feel I'm able to express myself on better like um basically I could like cite the ones on my resume but they're all that because I, I just cannot write like a loud house for example like I just can't um can't write like a normal family <laughs> gotcha no, I get that. Yeah. yeah I actually got a very broad way. Is that what you meant? Or did you mean like our specific? No, no, that was a great answer. That was a okay. great answer. Yeah. I mean, I'd say like a lot, I kind of have a lot of the same writing hangups as you. Like I need there to be something spooky or something magical mm -hmm. in it. And that's why animation has always been really just so compelling to me because you can do many things, many more things with it. And like, um, it always has to be funny. So like I do enjoy writing the jokes. I'm not I'm not sure how funny I am or how funny they are, but they make me laugh sometimes. So I think that's good. But all my favorite parts to write of a of a I guess of any kind of script, but specifically for animation, are like after the jokes when you have like a real moment between two characters where like someone gets vulnerable or someone says something that you know people can relate to or that you've related to yourself. Mm -hmm. Those are my favorite moments. So it's just like quieter moments that kind of they hit harder because everything else is jokes. And then you have one real thing that's happening. And yeah, like I loved Owl House for letting me do that. Like it's a lot of like wild fantasy stuff. It's a lot of scary um, out there stories, but then you have like these real characters exper experiencing like real things that everyone out, everyone who's watching can relate to. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I like. Uh, yeah, well, going going off that, um, yeah, I, I think like uh, I love that animation lends itself somehow like live action. It's it's somehow a little bit harder to pull this off, but like in Monsters Inc, you have these silly pun jokes, and then you also have like this idea of like um, like fear and love and you know like gigantic themes. So I just love that like a fart joke can exist alongside yeah. like just a truly like sobbing <laughs> theme that'll like pull at your heartstrings. Or like an Iron Giant, there's that scene like it's like a bathroom scene where it's like you think maybe he's like constipated, right? But then it's like this he's just like uh, it's also about nuclear war. So that's that's what I love. Just this juxtaposition of like you can play and be silly and have all these like um like childlike moments but also have this like real pathos and really talk about real things yeah that's great yeah 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 um I think we talked uh, a bit about like your path breaking into the industry in your introductions and thank you for that as well uh so maybe we can kind of get into um what are some of the most at the top of your head rewarding and most challenging aspects of the actual like writing process Right. Uh, so Mia, true to form and true to tradition of a hundred years. Um, Mia goes uh, first. Yes, we stick to tradition around here. <laughs> <laughs> I was I felt fine going first with the other questions, and then this one was like very tricky. So but I could I could do it. I got it. Wait, got wait, it. can you say what the question it. is again? And then oh, also okay. so, I just wanted to say we all have pink shirts and we, we didn't know we weren't told to do that, we just did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I just realized We're that. tapped into the hive mind, the Filipino hive mind. Um, um, should I? Well, just briefly. I, I, asked, I, I was going to say, I was going to be yeah, I asked Bobby for permission to do this. Um, just mm -hmm. out there, anybody, if you know anybody who is, if you or you know anybody who is eligible to register to vote in the Philippines, please do so. There's an extremely important presidential, coming, uh, presidential election coming up. And uh, if you want to change anything, now's the time to do it. So please, like, if you know anyone who's eligible or if you yourself are, go to your nearest embassy or consulate with, like, a passport. It's very easy. I did it. So please do it. Yeah, that's 100%. it. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mickey. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Back to the question. Oh, okay, fine. But um, if you have any, are you, like, tweeting any resources or anything like that? Can I... Can I uh, I'll, retweet I'll, you or something? I'll I'll do something. I'll, I haven't. Okay. I don't really know. How to Go use on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's healthy. That's a good healthy move on your part. Yeah. Um, uh, sorry. Go ahead, Ming. 
Mia. No, no, please go ahead, Bobby. I was just going to reiterate the question was um, like the most rewarding and most challenging aspects of the uh, writing process. Um, I, I really like, okay, well, I did notice that one of my showrunners of the shows that I mentioned was in the chat earlier, so it's going to be very embarrassing, but I did find, um, in addition to just like the general concept of development, I find that part of the process very rewarding, but I also really, one of the most rewarding experiences I had was writing on the show Dead Endia that's not quite out yet because uh, I had not realized that I could tap into personal and specific elements of myself as an LGBTQ person and, and translate those to episodes and TV. So those in combination of just like the, the whole concept of development in general, the most rewarding part to me because it's just fun and games and that you start to see the art coming in and it's like exciting is probably um, the fact that the industry has uh, shifted in such a way that I didn't know I could feel uh, that type of catharsis and satisfaction of writing how just stuff that is true to my life and I don't have to like analogize so much mm -hmm. and so that was those were probably some of the most meaningful mm -hmm. experiences and I've had other uh, queer showrunners like and, and creators like Chris Nee who also make that a very um, positive reality so um, when the show is like that the actual episodes and dealing with the characters feels like the real rewarding part where you can I don't know, you can twist the knife if you want, you can pull from your own experiences or you can make some spooky thing happen. Um, but other than that, the world building. And then the challenging part is probably <laughs> the, my job now as story editor is probably the most challenging um, part of the process that I've been a part of because it's quite a different job. So um, if people don't know what a story editor is in animation, I'm sure the titles are like, I think the titles are way different in live action. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the story editor is usually running the writer's room or co-running the writer's room with the showrunner and also edits all the scripts um, and does a pass on them and kind of makes it cohesive and is going through a lot of part of the process. So I actually love working with writers. I love that part and I love doing all that. But it is uh, probably the most challenging job in the sense of that as a writer you don't usually see all the production and all go to all the meetings and juggle all of the uh, different elements that are slightly more mechanical sometimes um, and organization brain so that's that can be challenging right when you're in the middle of it I'm finding it's still very fun but when you're in the middle of production um, and that crunch is happening and then you gotta figure it out and keep going and keep keep trucking um that's probably th that's probably been the most challenging part for me so far unfortunately the part that I'm currently in but uh <laughs> towards the middle of the season a crunch a real crunch <laughs> yeah nice I should have ended with the happy part so it felt very uplifting it's okay that's it's all fine. real. Yeah, it's all real, man. It's I'm, just real. Real. I'm just being yeah. real. I'm just being real. It's all part of the job. Positive. Yeah, it's it's all part of the job, but it is uh tricky. Thank you, Hamish, for to send me a nice <laughs> message no. in the chat. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I think that um, there's a couple hard things. There's like actually making yourself right. You know, it's like going to the oh, gym. Yeah, that's like hard. very few people actually like like. Uh, doing the reps and you know all that stuff but everyone loves having written um yeah so, <laughs> so there's that that's a hard part another hard part is the crippling self-doubt and imposter syndrome that like comes up a lot and then oh a third one uh work-life balance I think can be hard because mm -hmm. when I was first starting out it was like I am nothing if I don't have a job and I'm not employed I have no worth and you know whatever and like that's all a lie like you know you are you have worth because you are a human being um and even if no one sees your stories except you like that you you are a great person like just getting it out there is really important um and you are worthy of something to say um the uh the best parts for me for writing um are like when people laugh um yes the Dorothy Parker quote love that quote hmm. um yeah I uh I love when people laugh at my jokes I'm like I wrote that um and then especially like when like uh, if, if there's like any actor who says your jokes and it works but like name actors it's you know you grew up watching these people it's like they said the thing because I said they should say that um so that's <laughs> really exciting 
Um, and then also like, you know, moving people, like people come up to you afterwards and we're like, I really felt moved by that. Or they share what, what life experience they had that resonated with you. Like just the, the human connection afterwards of like, oh, like this thing that I thought only applied to me. And that's why I wrote about it. Um, it actually is universal. So that I think is also rewarding. Go ahead, Mickey. Yeah. Um, for, for me, and I imagine like a lot of us here, like an extremely rewarding thing for writing an animation is actually getting to see the thing fully fleshed out, fully rendered, because animation uh, takes a lot longer than I thought it would to like actually finish one episode, like maybe a year on average. It's so, so long. Yeah, wow. It's so long. So you kind of end up forgetting that you wrote these lines. And then when you hear them again, you're like, wait, that was that was actually pretty good. <laughs> yeah, maybe I can do this. So it's it's great. And also just being able to see the reactions that people have to it. Like I, for when, when my episode of the Owl House came out, I think like I hid in my bed because I was so, <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to read anything. And then, and then uh, like somebody told me like, it's fine. <laughs> you can look. And I did. And I was like, oh gosh, that's, that's wild. Like people getting to see your work is just extremely wild. And especially if they like it, they could not like it too. And that's also very interesting to see, but let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, yeah, like it's it's extremely rewarding to also just be around people who care about the same things you care about, who who like want to talk about animation, who kind of want to push it forward and all that. Like working in, I love being in a writer's room because it's just so fun to throw ideas back and forth, to work on something together. Conversely, it is also one of the most challenging things being in a writer's room because, you know, um, you always have to have some kind of solution to any story problem that comes up you're all working on it together but of course like you have to pull your weight you have to know when like it's a lot I, I imagine it's a lot freer in animation than it is in live action but also knowing when to speak is pretty important and like when to speak up so that mm -hmm. was challenging that's a challenging part of writing and I guess for me a huge part I don't know if it's part and parcel of the process of being a writer but for me a, a huge challenge was like the whole visa thing because uh, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. was juggling that and the writer's room at the same time, like dealing with the process of, of applying for a visa and just like that imposter syndrome, because applying for a visa means you got to prove to the government that you're worthy of, of remaining in this country, that you're an extraordinary alien. And that was very rough with my very, uh, my, my, my good old imposter syndrome. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, that was, uh, but I, you know, all of these challenges, they they're worth it in the end i think we're we're all happy doing what we like doing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i feel like i'm physically incapable of doing a different job yes <laughs> but i noticed that the, oh go ahead bobby i was i was just gonna make a snarky uh no, no <laughs> make the snark comment i'm i'm here i'm living for it i just i just noticed that the thing that all our answers have in common is that the middle is hard <laughs> the beginning and end are rewarding <laughs> that's how it is for act two is always the hardest right? act two is the, the hardest worst. It's, true. it's the worst it's true. even in like development or like when you're sitting down and you're like all seeing all the art come in and stuff i was so excited and at the end when you see how everyone's reacting to it oh it's so great but sometimes the middle is like because you're problem solving so much and you're in the thick of it it, it, it can be the hardest part for sure <laughs> Um, really quickly, I was just going to touch on like the technical aspects of it, of just kind of like, maybe there's a lot of aspiring writers and um, want to get into this, but um, I mean, like, maybe this is a loaded question, but like what the writer's room, what a writer's room is like um, for you, your experiences in that kind of sense, because I feel like that isn't talked about a lot unless you kind of, um, kind of like go out and kind of see for like, what's a writer's room like? I'm actually kind of like, I Googled that many times. I'm like, what's a writer's room like? Like what's it, in, what's it, what's going on in there? And what's the vibe like and that kind of stuff. And I think beyond the craft and beyond uh, kind of, you know, obviously having your scripts done, like you're gonna come in, it's collaborative writer's room. So what was it like for you, um, um, for you um, specifically? Uh, yeah. Oh, Joy? No, yeah, Joy. I, I, I can sense you. it. I oh, sense yeah. it. Go. Yeah, we'll, we'll shake it up. Um, and I'll obviously feel free to jump in. Um, what I found is like the first five to 30 minutes are like shooting the shit. Like it's just like, um, what'd you watch this weekend? How's it going? Like, uh, yeah, what's, what's going on with your cat? 
you know, whatever. I maybe spe specifically on Zoom, it's like a lot of like how your pets and your kids doing because we see them <laughs> on uh, camera or something or talking about whatever um, event happened, current event or like industry thing. Like, oh my gosh, did you read that thing? Um, yeah. And then after that, you're then. Um, it, I guess it depends on where you, the process you are. Like, you're either breaking story, breaking episodes, breaking the season. Like, how is this episode gonna go? How is this? How is this character arc gonna go? You know. Um, It'll be big picture at the beginning and then you start getting zooming in the further along you go. Um, and then, you know, sometimes it's reviewing an outline together. Depends on how the showrunner or story editor runs the room. Like sometimes things are more group written and sometimes things are more individual. Um, so you might be reviewing an outline together. You might be punching up a script together. Um, and then uh, and more just hanging out you know, in, in person. Like sometimes you have lunch together, but on Zoom, you know, obviously that's a little bit harder. Um, definitely miss that, of course. But it is also nice to like not be wearing pants sometimes on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wear pants in person, so uh, so that's fine too. There's no that there's... is bold. I love that. Yeah. What are they gonna do? Uh, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Thank you. Um. I guess I'll jump in too because I see Mickey still has mute on. <laughs> Sorry. Oh yeah. If Mickey, if Mickey likes to go last, like right before the I Zoom can, started. I can shake it like, up. I can shake it up. No, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Only if you want to. Only if you want to. <laughs> I mean, go ahead. <laughs> okay. All yeah, right. I'll, gonna, I'll, I'll come in at some point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I support it. Don't worry. I was uh, <laughs> just playfully noticing. <laughs> Um, I have been in a few different types of rooms, which is great, like great for me because it was really cool to compare and to know that every writer's room is extremely different based on the showrunner or whoever is running the room. Um, especially like even just on a basic level in animation, your showrunner might come from more of a production art background or might come from more of a writing background. Like that's definitely that could really inform mm. how the process is going right there. Uh, I have not staffed on any board-driven shows. I've only freelanced on board-driven, which would be Craig at the Creek. So I'm sure that their room is drastically different from the um, writing-based rooms uh, that are the ones that I've mostly been in. If people in the audience, audience, I don't know if that's the right word for this situation, but if people in the Zoom uh, don't know, board-driven means that it goes to storyboards uh, as the, like it will, they'll write to outline usually and then go into storyboards. Um, so it's a little bit more on the production art side driven, whereas a script driven show will write all the way to script and then they'll board off the script. Um, and so art, you know, people with art backgrounds might, or board backgrounds even might um, want to do a board driven show. I like writing, on, I mean, as a writer, I obviously like writing on a script driven show, so that's what I'll focus on. But then once you're in that room, assuming it's that type of show, I noticed a couple of different um, ways of going about it and some rooms also have freelance rooms where the room is just a summit um so it'll be like a couple of days a couple of weeks but that's how, the only way the room exists and those are more concentrated periods of time where everyone's brainstorming all day uh bonding just like i don't know trauma bonding by uh, spending like that much time together but usually you love the people that are there um and they can really range like the the ones I did for Dead India were like quite a, like a much longer than the ones I do here and because that was in London. The ones I do here in LA could be just like a week or even a couple days. Then after that, they will usually assign scripts out to the writers to, the, to freelance. So that's the only time you're in the room together. And that's like way, it just feels way different because you do have to talk and participate uh, at a different rate. And it's kind of fun because it's more developmenty, but it is also like really a lot more concentrated. So then other type of room would be the main one I've been in, which would be like a full staff writer's room. And in animation, I really like that they're smaller rooms. I hear how big the rooms are in live action. It could be like 20 people. I'm like, how do you even talk? Uh, how do you even feel like you deserve to like interrupt people to, to be like, no, my like bullshit idea. Uh, but in, in animation, it's usually maybe three to four people on average. And um, it's like, like Joy was saying, 30 minutes of shooting the shit, chatting, which I maintain is extremely, an extremely important part of the process. Uh, gets your brain going. It's great to like, we're not 
we're not scientists, we're not uh, entering data, we are creating something that's arguably art. Uh, so we need to be human beings in the room together. So we'll kind of like shoot the shit, talk and be just humans and then get into the uh, break. So like most rooms that I've been in, we'll all be together for the story break part of it. So we'll maybe meet, have met in the beginning to like get on the same page, discuss the season, maybe a couple weeks, a week, a few longer meetings. And then after that, it's like, we're usually working on our own, but we'll make a meeting for the, the story break where we've like said, okay, this is the episode eight or whatever. And here's um, what we, the premise we got approved. So now we're going to break the story and all participate together. Whoever is writing that story, and at least in the rooms I've been in, usually is the one writing on the board and has the beats and is like running that break and everyone else is participating and trying to get it together. Like here's the act one, here's what's going to happen. Here's the act two, act three. And then after that, uh, that's like the fun part. I really think that's super fun. And then after that, we'll like finish the writer, the script coordinator or the assistant will send all those notes. And then that writer will go off and write the script or outline depending on how, where that show puts the breaks in their process. So that's kind of like the technical part of it, but also it's very fun. Uh, and I love being in the room with other writers. <laughs> I love talking to other writers. It's just like problem solving central, which I love. You just get your brain enters this other state and you're just <laughs> problem solving and like talking about these things that are very either silly or fantastical as though they are extremely <laughs> extremely real <laughs> super funny <laughs> i love that <laughs> it's super funny <laughs> Yeah. I mean, what can I say? You've covered the whole thing, really. I I'm think. Sorry. No, no, no. Yeah. Thank you. Thank That's you awesome. so much for breaking it down. Um, yeah. I don't know how much people know, so I just started being like, I, maybe I should explain this. No, no, like, like okay, soup is this. Oh wait, okay, so a bowl is this. Okay, wait, soup <laughs> is this. I feel very silly, but go ahead, Nikki. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, you covered it all. Like, I guess the one part that um, I would add is that, like, after a first after like a few drafts have been finalized as a script, we go into punch up, which is always fun. Ooh, yeah. Right, like, yeah, punch up is basically when um, this, everyone has a copy of the script and you're basically just going through it, looking for places where you can punch it up. You can add jokes, you can make emotions more like highlighted and it's it's just a really fun time. It's very hard because I personally find it hard to like come up with jokes when a script is already pretty good. Like sometimes you're like, well, why would I touch this? It's perfect. But there are other times where you're like, oh no, but it's, if he says this, that's really that's that's really dumb. But maybe, maybe. So yeah, punch up is great. And then after that, the writer takes all those jokes in, makes a new draft with all of it, and like sends it off into the ether. And a year later, it's a, it's a TV show. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. A year later, we're like, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and all the production people are like. And then I actually, we, and I actually, years. No, I don't actually know what happens after. I don't even, I, it's really hard. No, it really is very real that that's our <laughs> experience of it. Cause like, that's how I feel too. Like, and then something happens and I know yeah. it's a lot of people. It's but so I, much people doing so much work, storyboards, uh, revision, color, character design, prop design, all these incredible people. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's, it's and for us, we just like, it's the ether for sure. Yeah. And then you kind of like apologize if you're at a crowd scene. <laughs> yeah. Joy, did you have a do you have uh, thoughts on that bit? Uh yeah, no, I I feel like it's it's all out there, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. I don't know, you go ahead. Oh, uh, I will ask this question. Uh, so that was. That was awesome because like getting into the like nitty gritty and like the technical stuff of like production like and so and that's a whole other I was gonna say podcast but this isn't even a podcast it's a it's a thing but um, I think um, I what I wanted to ask because it's like Filipino American like History Month like as a Filipino do you think your culture and upbringing um, play a role in the stories that you'd like to tell now or in the future um mia true to form sure i was i was halfway curious if uh if people were gonna try and check it up again 
Um, I mean, I have a very intersectional identity and there's a lot of parts of my identity that overlap. So I feel that it's impossible for me to separate myself from my work and what I'm writing. It's, especially with writing, it's very personal. And um, even if you are writing like ghosts and demons and or silly things, um, it's just a very intimate experience to write something, even if you're writing like for for pre-K or something. So yeah. I do feel everything plays a part in what makes it onto the page because what makes it onto the page is an accumulation of your entire life and and who you are and your sensibilities. And, you know, it's like word association, even like, oh, what do you think of when you think of this word? Everybody will say something different. So it might seem to me like I am just following the structure of what I'm supposed to do. I'm following what I learned and I'm just writing, you know, oh, just a normal average script and story, but it, yet it always comes out really different um, mm -hmm. from someone else's. So like on a broad sense, I feel that our culture always is there in some way, maybe even storytelling sensibilities, how we've grown up. Like my Filipino mom is probably different from other moms, but yet it is also the same. Like I think animation is particularly beautiful because it's where like just that specificity becomes universal. So you're allowed to and encouraged to put kind of those parts of yourself and your own sensibilities into the writing. So broad sense for sure. But um, I also have been fortunate to write on projects that we have gotten had those discussions on. And um, just when you're in a diverse room and when you're in a room, not just diverse ethnically, but like, you know, um, any just age, personality, um, type, what letters of the uh, alphabet, alphabet mafia you are, like different um, conversations start to happen and that always informs the characters. For, for Asian American identity specifically, obviously on The Ghost of Molly McGee, it came up quite a bit um, because the character is Hapa, the lead character, and um, our room is, you know, has people from different backgrounds. So I really loved talking about like karaoke in the room and having mm -hmm. a little, uh, like as soon as I chimed in, then our Vietnamese writer was like, okay, everyone stop the Filipinos talking, like let them do the, say the karaoke thing because we take it so seriously. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, in that sense, it just makes it in or we just might think of something slightly different. When you say the word food, I think of like adobo, that's like a normal food for me and normal is relative to what anyone else is saying. So yeah, it's made it in. in. In my development projects, obviously too, I try to get it in an even more stronger capacity, the show that I have in development currently and one that I previously had in development that didn't go anywhere, um, both had Filipino leads. Awesome. I mean- I, mean, like, I have very long answers. <laughs> no, oh, okay. they're, they're all great though. Yeah. Like, and you also say a lot of things and I'm like, yes, that's what she said, which is great. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's just because I go like, first. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for doing it. Um, yeah, I mean, Bobby, you know, like definitely a lot. Um, I, I I've told you that like nearly all the things that I wrote for myself are like Filipino characters, regardless of whether or not that's like the story being Filipino. Generally, it isn't because like you know, there's more fun in just being a character rather than having that be their whole identity. We know that. Um, but yeah, like what was part, what was fun about writing for the Owl House is that like um, our protagonist is Dominican American, and there are a lot of like you know we share that colonialism root. Like we we there are a lot of similar things that I was just like, well, uh, slippers are a thing. Slippers are a deadly weapon, both there and here. Like there are a lot of you know people love to connect through food. There are a lot of like relatable Filipino things that I saw in in writing for Luz. But yeah. also like, yeah, like in, in it, I would try to sneak in like little Filipino things. Like I tried to put in a Tarsher demon at some point. I don't know if it panned out because <laughs> it, it was a little too demon-y and I was like, it doesn't really look like a Tarsher anymore, but it looks pretty cool. I'll take it. I put in a jungle and I'll, I, I, I try to put in as much stuff as possible, but at, at the same time, like what Mia said, like it does, like who you are is like what comes out on the script a lot of the time. Like the things that you've experienced even as, um, growing up the things that you experience as a person from the Philippines like there are stories about like our Luz is a character who's far away from home and there are a lot of things that I 
as a as somebody living far away from home from a from like some you know a very loving family like it's it's stuff that comes out in on the page every now and then mm -hmm. and yeah like same like the the stuff that we've got in development definitely uh being filipino is like something that i put into consideration for it mm -hmm. but yeah yeah that's awesome uh, joy. Uh, yeah, what they said, basically. Yeah, it it can't help but inform you. you know, even when it comes down to little things like naming your characters, like it, such such a small thing like that, like um, can can be huge. Like um, uh, I, I like want to name some specific. I'm if you look up monsters and characters, they all have normal human names, um, but some of them are like ethnically specific, and I think that's such a small way to like just be like this world is diverse, even though they're all monsters, you know. So yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I will, um, if I can embarrass you a little bit, Joy, like I will shout out Joy a little bit of like, um, she has this um, um, show called uh, Support of White Parents and you guys should check it out because it's amazing, um, it's hilarious, super funny. And Joy wrote it and wrote the uh, uh, screenplay, and, not screenplay, uh, music and all that kind of stuff. But like, I remember uh, sitting in the audience and you had on the screens of just kind of like those Filipino, like um, uh, historical and uh, just sort of like bits that you had like scrolling through. And I love that. Like, it's a perfect primer for your show. Um, it's so good. <laughs> It's so thanks. You know, Chris actually um, in the chat here um, played our cajon. So thanks for being here. And yeah, very cool. And thanks, Bobby, for coming to the show. Yeah, we played pre pandemic at Second City Hollywood. So I appreciate the shout out. Yeah, I wrote the um, lyrics and the script, and my friend Sam and Tony wrote the music. I wish I could take credit for music, but but yes, yes, that was so. And it, it was it's about an Asian girl or Filipino girl who wishes on a shooting star for a supportive white parents. Um, <laughs> so yeah, you know, I, I I couldn't have written that without having my life experience. It just like, and I didn't even I didn't write that because I thought it would someone else would like it. I truly wrote that because like I I'm working through some stuff in my life. So um, yeah. The writing process of it for for you, Joy. Like, what was the stuff that kind of helped you? Um, kind of like, uh, it, it sounds like it was very therapeutic for you. But like, can you talk a little bit about like writing that kind of short? You know, because essentially it's kind of a short, um, like film, short, um, kind of like production, that kind of stuff. Um, and and it fully represents just kind of like Filipino culture and that kind of stuff. But like, uh, it's very specific and. You know, um, do you want to talk a little bit about yeah, it? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you know, I hope I hope my parents aren't watching. I don't see them on the Zoom. Um, but, <laughs> but I mean, I did draw on my parents' actual stories. And I think what I, you know, people come up to me afterwards too and talk to me about like, they love that like the dad character is based on my dad. You know, he has the typical immigrant story. He came from the provinces. He came from Beagle and didn't have much money, didn't have shoes, you know, all that stuff. And my mom came from Tondo. And while that's sort of a rougher part, like she had like maids and chauffeurs and stuff. So they love that like one of my parents came from a rich background, one of them is a poor background and stuff. And that, you know, often we see like the 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 immigrant that's like poor, but we don't always get to see like the fair skin, like, you know, privileged one. So, um, so you know, just really drawing on specifics rather than like uh, uh, just generalizations and things like that. Um, it, I wrote it as a 30 minute sh um, short, like a comedy show for UCB. There was a, a class called, um, writing a half hour stage show. So I took that eight week class and I wrote the script and the lyrics in that class and then just put it up a ton of times. Like, you know, I asked my friends to be in it and um, putting stuff up on its feet, like can just really inform you. Like you get to know, like this joke works, this joke doesn't work. This is tighter I, in the moment. You just think of things. And somebody had asked like, how do you work on your craft? And I'm a good Asian. I, I highly recommend classes, you know, just study writing groups. You know, I, I brought it everywhere I could. I asked everyone for feedback. Um, worked on it for like literally years. So, you know, it, that, that that's the grinding part of this is, um, but it's highly rewarding, I think, especially if you love your story. And and if you love your story, it feels like work, but it also doesn't, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, what did you want to say? Like with Joy, that like, it's a whole production. Like, what did you want to say with it? Do you kind of feel like? Uh, oh, like what, what am I trying to say with the script? Like the theme? Hey. Oh yeah, you know, um, there's a spoiler. There's a there's a uh, song at the end that's called "All Parents Suck," but that's tongue in cheek, of course. Like you know, through the musical, Joy learn. You know, she learns about her parents' past and she becomes grateful for them, and she understands why they um, come from where they're coming from. You know, I, I I've learned in my real life that 
you know, parents and through generational trauma and stuff, people can only give what they were given unless they go out of their way to like heal and things like that. And a lot of our immigrant parents um, don't have the resources or time or interest in like reading a bunch of self-help books, you know? So, um, so I guess my hope, my, what I try to say with that is, you know, like um, we are all imperfect beings that are doing the best that we can. And so when you can forgive your parents and yourself and, and, and see that everyone, everyone loves in their own, in, in their own special way, that's a lyric, everyone, you know, um, everyone is doing their best and, um, and, and be great, be grateful for what you have, but also like, accept that some people are black, aren't just black and white, you know, they, they have all these things. Anyway, I'm rambling, but I think you get it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, if you are in the LA area, when, I don't know when the next time you, your guys are doing a show, but it's so funny. Um, it's great. Uh, but go ahead, Kira. Do you want to move on to the next question? Thank you, Joe. Okay, I think like we shall go on to like one last question. Then shall we move to Q and A? Sure. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So the last question that I have for you guys to wrap this up is like, what advice would you give to someone who wants to pursue writing? What was it to who wants to pursue writing? Yeah. Just like general advice. Uh. Sure. You can you can you can be as specific as you want. You can be as general as you want. But advice, you know, right? <laughs> yes. <Is> that, well, <laughs> should we pretend that it's somebody who's at the very beginning of their career, and maybe um, that's probably what the audience is at too, right? The people in the chat. I think we should expect it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah, sure. so when they're like, yeah. Uh, I felt like Mickey was gonna go first. That's why I waited for a second because well, I could, I could see that. I don't know. Like I just, I something. mean, I'm still at that point where I don't entirely feel like I'm in. I'm like somebody who can give advice just yet, you know. But I guess like what's worked out for me is like um, writing something that you care about, something that makes you laugh. It's, it's I mean, it's important to have a good sample if you ever want to start out anywhere. So the best way to put yourself forward is through your script rather than anything else. Like nothing fancy is necessary. All you need is good writing or at least something that you care about. Like write something that makes you laugh, something that makes you cry because if it does manage to move you in some way or another, then it's going to move somebody else, I think. And uh, yeah, like write something that excites you. And like one of the things that we were, like one of the things that one of our professors made us do back, back in the day was, um, it, before starting out writing, it's like a small technical exercise before you start out writing anything, like write about what, like what about your script or your story idea excites you? What What is the thing that you care about? Because it's really easy to lose interest in your story, like when you're in it, like it's le really easy to lose your way when you're writing, especially if you get into the weeds and act you and you're kind of like, why did I even come up with this idea in the first place? It sucks. So it's always like good for me to go back to that document and be like, oh, this was back when I was young and um, unjaded by the process of writing and I still cared about things. And instead of this mess that I am in, in act two. So like that's <laughs> like a small, like practical thing that you could do like if before embarking upon any project, like really think about why you care about it, why you want to do it and what about it is the thing that drives you to write it. Right. But yeah, have a have a good sample. That's what I think. Yeah, that's such a good point. Like I do, I feel that people like make the mistake of thinking they need to chase a trend sometimes. Or when you are really in the beginning, starting out and just trying to at that place where you're just trying to put together your sample, not even like okay, I've got my portfolio and I'm how do I get in, you know, to interviews and stuff like that. When you're just trying to come up with your sample, people might think okay well this is what's popular or uh, this is never going to sell or this is just like something that Hollywood would ever make and I feel that that's probably like you said not the way to start on your project you should start with something that you really care about and think about either what you want to say thematically or personally or a character that's like just really in your head that you can't get rid of because um, if you try to emulate something, first of all, the market changes like constantly. So you will never be able to keep up by the time you finish your sample, it, it will be different. Mm -hmm. Um, and you do have to share this work and 
pitch it to other people or talk about it if people read your sample and they want to talk to you in the meeting and like it, it is hard. It is a difficult thing because not all the time are they looking for those things. Like they're not always looking for this weird indie project that you wrote, but at least they'll know who you are. It's way better to express yourself authentically because like to me, I cannot pretend to be another person when I'm in the meeting. So if they're looking for me, I've already got the job. And I heard an actor say that on a panel one time too, where he's like, if, you're, if they're looking for you, you've got the job. So your job is to be yourself and express yourself to another person. And one of the ways we do that is through our writing. So like your sample should be indicative of you and what you genuinely want to write. And that doesn't mean that it should be like, you're a queer Filipino American trying to make it in the industry or whatever. It should, like I tried to do that way and that is not how my brain works. My sample uh, one of my earlier samples was about like an alien bed and breakfast. And that was indicative of me and who I am as a person more than writing um, my immigrant story. <laughs> so yeah, this is more of a seconding of what Mickey said, but I think it was really a really good point. I will say, yo, I'd watch the hell out of that show, uh, by the way. Go yeah. ahead. Which one, Alien b, &B? Uh, Yeah, yeah, Alien b, &B. All right, I'll send it to you, <laughs> Mark. <laughs> sounds really fun. <laughs> yeah, it does. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, just what they said. Yeah, just uh, work on your craft. Um, uh, be a, I'll be a good Asian again and say like, when you get a good education and and you have skills and stuff, no one can ever take that away from you. You know, um, and when you're writing for you, um, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. It, it's it's uh, you're expressing yourself and you're being yourself. Um, I, on a less practical side, besides classes, getting script coverage, writing groups. Um, you know, blacklist, all that, all that stuff, um, you know, uh, uh, have a life. Cause if you don't have a life, you won't have anything to write about, um, you know? Uh, so like experience, experience your life, be, have friends, be with your family, be with people, read books, be in the world, protest, you know, uh, all those things. Uh, and then uh, also like find, find some sort of anchor, like self-care something that like grounds you when you're starting to spin out or whatever, like something that makes you happy um, that doesn't have anything to do with like achievements and accomplishments and money and all that stuff. Something that like just makes you happy. And, you know, it could be that like, uh, I think a lot about Marie Kondo, like it's like she didn't know that um, cleaning was going to be the thing that made her like a multimillionaire. It was just her passion, you know, so like uh, uh, whatever thing that w random hobby that you have, my, mine lately has been reading about self-help books. It helped me write support of white parents, you know? So it's like, whatever makes you happy will feed into, you know, this earning, you know? <clears throat> That's great. Sorry, go ahead, Mickey. I was just nodding in agreement. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, was, it was all good points. Like you, yeah. it, like on a related note, it is, probably good advice to have a day job if possible uh, if you are working your day job because you do need to have an outside life if you're like really in the beginning and then some people are like okay this is it I quit my day job and I'm gonna like write this in a month and I only have like two months of savings and like I've got to make it in that time that's probably not like a great environment to put yourself in if you're not independently wealthy because um, you it is an art so you do want to have that outside life and that outside uh, support for the amount of time especially in animation that it takes to get stuff off the ground so that's related and practical and not as uh, fun sexy advice actually I have heard some um, a piece of advice that like to stuck by me through like um, the years I'm wondering if you guys have heard this before um, when I pitched to like a uh, network before, um, one of the questions that they asked me right after the pitch was like, so why should this be an animation? And I never thought of it in that scope because like I always thought like, oh, I'm going to pitch for like this thing. And like this thing is definitely an animated um, uh, channel. Therefore, it has to be animation, right? But I just didn't realize like how, like what you guys were talking about earlier, like how much more different um, animation is in the scope of writing and how much more you can stretch it and how much more you can like, make people feel you know yeah mm -hmm. right 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 um yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> shall we move the q a yeah uh so okay. uh christina if you're on the call hey christina hello hi hi you want hi. to ask a question uh, yes. Um, Thank you. 
Um, the question is, what has been your favorite project you've worked on? I can answer that because it's a very simple one. I love the L House. It's essentially the only real pro the only real project I've worked on. So yeah, it's, it was such a fun sandbox to play in because it's just wild that anything could happen. Any like the funniest, weirdest, most disgusting things you can think of will become beautiful in it. So I love it. Uh, and it's, I feel and bad. It's, it's like also oh, just like my bag, like it's fantasy, it's horror, it's comedy. It's a girl who's got to like find her way in this weird new world. It's a girl who wants to become a witch. And that was me once upon a time. So Owl House was so much fun to work on. And I, you know, I hope to be able to work on more things like it one day. Yeah. It's such a good show. I love, I love it. Um, I feel really bad to answer the question because then like the other people that you don't say are going to be have their feelings hurt. I, um, mine was so easy to do. <laughs> yeah, I know. Good job. Good job. But also I'll do the disclaimer that I've been very fortunate to be able to be picky and and find shows that I really am drawn to and that I genuinely like the content for and and the people and enjoy working on. So disclaimer, um, I'm very I feel very fortunate that I've been able to work on shows that I like. Okay, now I'll answer the question. <laughs> uh, probably there's like a couple, there's two kind of projects that have been my favorite personal experience. So one's definitely Dead India. Um, I've really never been in a writer's room like that where uh, we've all been able to feel safe and encouraged to talk about our personal experiences like that in the realm of like something that's spooky and has you know a supernatural element in it and comedy and horror and teen and all of this stuff so it was super super special plus I got to go to London so that was fun <laughs> and that was my favorite experience and it totally totally changed how I approach writing afterwards and what kind of rooms I want to be in and how I want to see that room just to feel the safety of um, how we can kind of get past this idea of like the rep sweats of like, oh, I'm representing my whole community. What do I do? Oh, there's so many things I have to like think about and get into nuance and just be yourself and uh, create stories like that. So that was one of my favorites ever. Um, plus I got a bunch of good food in London. And uh, the other favorite is similarly, I really enjoyed writing on shows with my friends. The projects would be Vampirina and Ridley Jones, uh, both Chris Nee shows. That's how I, Bamfrey was my first staff job. So it's super, super special to me. Came up with those friends in the industry, did my best to go follow them everywhere on, on Ridley Jones. My friend Jeff, who was a fellow staff writer on Bamfrey, it was the story editor. And that was a super special time. So in both those shows, there was great queer rep, there was great cultural rep, there was thoughtfulness and important themes and just but that didn't take over the fun but also like working with your friends is really fun uh and that made a big difference to why I'm gonna choose those projects for my answer I don't know. uh yeah I know I feel like I should be I'll be political and be like I loved all of them they were all so wonderful to work on I know um, we have to course. say it <laughs> um, uh healing power to do is my first staff writing job so of course special place in my heart as well like so grateful they took a chance on me um and then uh, uh, the, the, my current gig is amazing. I mean, you know, it's just such a great room, such a warm room, so much experience. And I learn, I learn something from everyone every day. And yeah, everyone's so nice. And I love the property. You know, um, Monsters, Inc. is just such an amazing property where, you know, I gr grew up watching and all of that stuff. It's just, uh, just really a dream. And then, of course, my own projects are always nice to work on because, you know, I, I get to be my own creative boss in a lot of ways. Like, uh, I want to write this. It's going in. I like this joke the best. Great. <laughs> Awesome. Right on. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, and then we can close out uh, to respect everyone's time. It's our, we're at the uh, afternoon hour, but uh, Christine, if you're on the call, um, we brought her on. Uh, do you want to answer your question, Christine? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for all, all of our panelists' time and also the opportunity to ask my question verbally. Uh, my question is, um, what are some specific resources, uh, TV shows, books, uh, sh movies to study um, to help us improve with uh, writing for animation? 
Well, I guess there's some basic TV writing books, like uh, Ele Elephant Books, I think is one. And um, like uh, animation is not similar, you know, it's very similar. It's like the same, you know, act structure, beginning, middle and end, all that stuff. So any TV writing book that you read will give you the basics of story and dialogue and formatting and all of that stuff. I, I'll say um, study your favorite films, break them down. That's what I used to do with like, I did it with Princess Mononoke. I kind of like sat down, watched it and then wrote down just like what was happening on screen and then tried to figure out like, are these act breaks? How do they kind of, how do these beats work with each other and kind of inform each other and tell the story and escalate tension and all that stuff. So it's like, just whatever your favorite movies are, figure out, figure them out, like break, put, pull them apart to see what, what makes them good. And I think that's kind of been more helpful for me than any kind of book or, or, well, school is great. <laughs> Go to school if you can, but um, I know that's not available to everybody. But yeah, just watch more things that you like. Think about them critically. Think about them like, how would you write this? Mm. It's, it's, it's it's really mm -hmm. helpful, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I also, um, I took um, a writing for animation class at UCB. Um, and that's where I wrote, I wrote the first half of my sample, which I submitted to um, Sesame and that's what got me into the fellowship. So that's a good class. And also Second City teaches a writing for animation class. I think the program might be like designed or run or taught or all of the above by my friend, Patricia Valletto. She's an amazing teacher. So I recommend that class as well. Awesome. Um, probably also if, uh, be careful if you do want to study your favorite TV shows, but like, I, I don't necessarily think you need to read the script of those. Like probably what Mickey was suggesting would be a really good way of doing it because sometimes the script that you're going to get especially if it's board driven or something is like not going to be the same as how you would write it so mm -hmm. that kind of way of studying it and then writing down what happened is a really good educational way like I do that a lot with just the beats as well not even just the script um but yeah sometimes when I google they'll be like oh like gravity falls what's that script it's like not gonna look <laughs> like how it actually uh looked so making the beats for the structure while watching it is super helpful and um also like if you're able to do a writer's group that's great because you can just see how other people are writing and give each other feedback and just start to pick up on things you like and don't you don't have to like listen to everybody but you just pick up on what you like and don't like and get the practice is, is probably a good way to do it yeah like learning how to give and take notes is really important in a writer's room because like it, you know you have to know how to give notes that are respectful but constructive at the same time and then also just taking notes sometimes it could be pretty harsh and you gotta like build up that skin to know that it's never personal it's always about the story and it's always like just look for the note behind the note what are they actually seeing in your script that you need to or you might want to consider changing or improving so yeah just being a writer ain't just writing <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys recommend um, like reading uh, like a ton of like pilot scripts and that kind of stuff? There's just like, um, there's like website uh, called like, like, there's a ton of websites with an uh, archive of like, um, like screenplays and that kind of stuff. But um, do you guys get a lot out of like taking the, your favorite shows and kind of reading those pilots? A hundred percent. Yeah, it'll just like the more you, it's like anything, the more you read, the more it just naturally comes out of you. Like you um, input stuff and then you output stuff it's great right, right. pilots especially yeah. pilots are super super hard to write and everything about that is very challenging so reading pilots specifically uh, as opposed to like an average episode I find really educational because they got to get so much information mm -hmm. out right away yeah. but yet like not feel you make you feel weighed down sure. and those are always interesting yeah 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 for sure same making yeah, absolutely. <laughs> like, I mean, just building up off that, like a pilot has to do all the heavy lifting to get somebody hooked onto the show. So the things you would look want to look at in a pilot is how do they introduce the characters? How do they introduce the world, the conflict? And how do they end specifically in a way that keeps people coming back for more? Like, how do they keep that engine going? Right. right. So yeah, pilots are especially important. You know what I also just realized too as a resource I should say uh, to check out the fellowships to apply to because they have, are huge educational that's how I got into the industry the Nick Loading writing program mm -hmm. those are a huge educational element that is not you know grad school or something um, they're really really hard to get into but I also kind of use them as just deadlines because they're like free to enter most of them 
the good ones are free. So at the very least, they're a deadline for practice. But um, just because that's a s- lower chance of, you know, getting into and they're competitive, I didn't think to mention it. But if we were able to get into one, it would be a big educational experience. Yeah, I second that as a Sesame alum. Yeah. Um, uh, Kira, was there another question you wanted to ask before we close out? Because I had one more, and it's like a geek question. Ish. Uh, I think. Are we good? I think okay. we're good. Yeah. I just wanted to ask, uh, in closing out, like, um, what are your? We can go around the panel. Like, what are your favorite um, right now? Right now, well written shows, the, the best written shows that you're loving right now. Uh, that you're living for, and uh, yeah. What we do can in I, the shadows. Can I chime in? Well, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great show. What were you in the shadows? Kira, what? I was going to say let's chime in and ask Bobby to start first, because like, you guys have been the ones talking. Oh, no, like, no, I don't, yeah. I don't need to chime in. It's for the <laughs> but Well, you- I'm curious. Yeah, we're all curious. Yeah, Bobby. Yeah, Bobby. <laughs> yeah, Bobby. <laughs> I also don't care what I think. Go ahead. Start with Mia because tradition. Tradition. Well, I I'm gonna steal Mickey's answer because I was I was also gonna say what we do in the shadows. <laughs> it's uh such a, such a fun show. Love it. It's one of the things that I look forward to coming out currently. Ted Lasso just ended, but I was watching that religiously as it came out weekly. So. Those were my two that I was like waiting for the weekly drop, really waiting to check. But like what we do in the shadows, I also love the movie. The writing yeah, is so good, yeah. so up my alleys. The actors, right. Dude, I would <laughs> kill to write for what we do in the shadows. Okay. Right. But I don't think I'm, I'm funny enough, but I would love to be that person. I don't think I can write it, but yeah, I, like, I know, uh, same, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> um, you know, I don't normally, um, I'm not normally super into dramas, but I love, squid game lately it's just it was I, really I good. watch it right before bed <laughs> don't recommend that i have nightmares but squid game, yeah it's like oh man uh, very yeah going through it now oh another show that oh yeah i'm, I'm really on episode into. six yeah or just oh my gosh episode. keep go oh how are you it's, are you all right <laughs> yeah how are you oh yeah i definitely have nightmares <laughs> it's stressful it's very stressful Super There's stuff. like, you know, the, the dystopia, but also like choosing um, who gets to be in your group project. Mm. Very oh. stressful. We all know that feel, right? <laughs> Messed up. Messed up. But yeah. another show that I'm really, really into right now is Succession. It's another show that I never could write for, but it is so funny. I, I could talk about it for hours. And yeah, I know that it's not animation at all. It's the furthest furthest thing away from it, children's animation that you could possibly <laughs> answer but I, I know like it's also good not to just you know limit yourself to watching animation if you're interested in it because you could just learn so many other kinds of stories out there or like mm-hmm. characters or things like that just remove all the swearing you know yeah well plus if you work in animation and you go home and watch animation sometimes it does yeah. feel like work still <laughs> yeah I kind of feel like if you uh, work on the animation go home watch animation and you write for animation it just kind of like it's a cycle so like I I feel like um yeah I don't know like I I like I, the, I don't know with animation I I kind of feel like there's kind of like a the, the humor is actually kind of like recyclable as well I don't know if that's a word but it's like I I feel like it's kind of the same kind of bits um but uh anyway I can go off on a tangent as well. I mean, I still like to watch it for sure, but yeah, yeah, sometimes your brain is like, should I do that? Should I have done that in the episode? (laughs) Exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, Kira, do you, what's your favorite bit right now? Me? Yeah. Oh my God. This is not fair, you did not answer. Okay. Um... Right now, I still feel that one day at a time, the Netflix remake is really good because it's very heartwarming and it's very like um, emotional and it's also very comedic. It's something that I aspire to write for, but like I can't because <laughs> I haven't tried. Yeah. What do you mean you can't? I haven't, I haven't tried. I haven't tried. Oh, okay. okay. I haven't tried, yeah. I think you're pretty funny. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this is a support <laughs> group for Kira. <laughs> oh my God, guys. Thank you, Christine, for the uh, question. And uh, was there any, does that make sense, Christine, if you're still on the call? Sort of like yes, that. it did. Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so thank you everyone for coming on this uh, panel. It was wonderful to get to chat with everybody um, and meet everyone and everything like that and hear your experiences and all that kind of stuff. So um, I appreciate it. And uh, thank you everyone for uh, joining the call as well. Thank you for your questions. And uh, hopefully we got a lot out of it. Um, but um, is there anything, I'll let you guys have the last word before I just sort of hit like end meeting for all. Um, is there anything you wanted to say um, before you logged off or anything like that? You are awesome. Me? All, you, all of you, Oh. everyone else on this panel, everyone watching this panel, you are all awesome. <laughs> yeah, I saw a lot yeah. of people I know in the, in the chat and also like names I recognize as showrunners and people who work in the industry so like oh no, I would have I, I oh, know I um but they but you know especially to the people like coming from around the world and everything hope this was helpful and um you can I saw a lot of really good questions in the Q&A that we didn't get to answer because I'm like a rambler so please feel free to tweet uh at me <laughs> and try to uh, I'll try to still answer if you like, if I, or and if I'm capable of it, I might not know the answer, but my Twitter is at Mia Rosella, just my name. That's all. Good, and happy Filipino American Heritage Month. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing. Heritage Month, yeah. Right. That's what this is, right. <laughs> yeah. <we're good. laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Like, thanks everyone for tuning in. We like we we were happy to do this talk, and like, hopefully, it was helpful to everyone. And just please keep writing your stories, especially if like you're from around the world, because we need them. Please yeah. keep doing them. Yes, ma'am. God, I'm so glad that you said that there were like showrunners at the end of this thing, because now I'm really. I nervous. didn't know until the end, because then they started. I didn't know, and then I saw some. I saw some names. They they hid. On the fence. There might not be that many. Yeah, I saw like maybe two, right. so maybe it's fine. Yeah. We, I, yeah, just hoping we. I didn't say anything like. Put in there. <laughs> I'm sorry, I put that in your head. I was just like, oh, cool. Uh, but maybe two, it was maybe two. You're fine. <laughs> Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you to the attendees and panelists and everyone else. So um, I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And I uh, hope that this was uh, encouraging, inspiring, uh, insightful. So um, thank you, everyone, again, for being a part of this. And uh, we will see you again soon. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. Have a great weekend.